So, we are live and uh, I want to welcome everyone to today's stream. Uh, today I want to welcome Andrea Martini on the stream uh, in a second. He's uh, owning the robot factory. It's an Italian company uh, building these awesome upgrade kits for uh, 3D printers, which are belt printers when they are converted. And uh, we're going to do this conversion build today. And I want to welcome everyone in the chat to uh, also ask questions and give feedback. Um, and we'll start with a quick introduction of uh, Andrea. He's also on the stream. And here he is. Welcome. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. welcome. Good welcome. evening. Uh, good morning, good wherever good you evening. are. <laughs> Yeah. In Italy is evening, <laughs> not really. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Um, um, I quickly start why we are talking today because um, I want to give this a little bit of context, what we're doing and why we're doing it today. Um, so, Andrea, he approached me. Uh, I think it was a few weeks ago when uh, he wrote me an email that he is uh, doing printer conversion kits to. Uh, to turn a normal 3D printer into a belt system. And you can see it uh, on his website. So we're gonna have a look at, at the belt system in a second here, what I've on my table. And he approached me and uh, asked me if I wanna test out um, a new kit, which is the Steel Roller 45. And that is a kit to convert uh, an Ender 3 Pro in this case. And yeah, Andrea, I wanna um, um, I wanna give you the chance to uh, introduce yourself. So maybe talk a little bit about yourself and what you are doing and why. Okay, uh, nice to meet you and uh, all the other people in this moment uh, online. Okay, uh, I am Andrea Martini and uh, I am uh, CEO of uh, Robo Factory SRL. Uh, I uh, develop a lot of uh, different uh, machine and uh, uh, it's a very, very long time that uh, we develop uh, some different kind of uh, machine. Until uh, 2002, uh, we produce uh, CNC machine. And uh, now I see uh, the very, very interesting and the future of a 3D printer. And so I have developed uh, a lot of ki different kind of uh, printer. Uh, we start with uh, uh, professional printer. I think that I am one of the first uh, uh, that have uh, uh, think about uh, 45 degree. Um, after I want also to tell why uh, 45 degree and uh, different from uh, 45 degree and uh, 19 degree, the standard printer. Uh, I think uh, uh, that uh, in this moment the future is uh, 3D printer. Uh, the big problem of uh, all the 3D printer, uh, 19 degree 3D printer, is that uh, is limit uh, the size of uh, the dimension uh, of the plane, the plate. Okay, so it's necessary to wait until it's finished the printing and uh, to clear uh, and prepare and start again. Uh, Sometimes it's necessary to have more than one piece uh, ready uh, to use. And uh, with 45 degree, it's possible to start a job with uh, 10, uh, 20 pieces and uh, uh, the, the printer uh, print uh, without uh, stop. Okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, uh, different uh, uh, future from 19 and 45 degree printer. Uh, the more important is uh, uh, is possible to print uh, 
uh, endless. Uh, so uh, with uh, a small uh, uh, table, a small printer, it's possible to print a very, very, very long part. And uh, it's interesting because uh, uh, sometimes uh, some customer ask me for window for uh, uh, some profile uh, to have a very long part with a normal printer it's necessary to have a, 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 a lot of small piece and the glue together uh, with this new technology 45 degree is possible to print uh, what you want uh, other very very important things uh, is uh, uh, that uh, uh, you don't have uh, more uh, the problem with with for, uh, with the 19 degree that uh, you see the uh, the layer okay mm -hmm. uh, if you have uh, a, a round uh, surface uh, uh, you, you see every uh, layer uh, with 45 degree is no more uh, you don't see more uh, the uh, the signal layer uh, other uh, very important things uh, with 45 degree um, is not necessary to have support one of the most uh, problem uh, with the 3d printer uh, you spend a lot of time to print uh, sometimes you spend more time to print uh, the support than the piece uh, is, itself and yeah. uh, also uh, is not so easy uh, with the standard uh, slicer uh, to put uh, in the correct uh, position uh, the support and sometimes uh, the support is uh, very very hard uh, to put away also when you have finished the print uh, the printing job uh, you uh, need to work a lot to uh, cut to put away the support and also uh, sometime is uh, possible that you broken your piece with the 45 degree is uh, uh, very very different because uh, it's possible to print like uh, nine, uh, 19 degree uh, without uh, support yeah so the the overhangs you say no yes the overhang yeah. yes 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 i've just put uh, i just put this uh, photo here on the screen to show the two different uh, uh, versions that you actually yes. have Yes, and yes. that that's I, actually the interesting one is actually that I never saw the right one. Um, I think it's also pretty unique um, to have a belt system that is vertical. So still you can you can probably print in um, a number of parts, just a series of things. But uh, you're not printing long stuff, right? You're limited in terms of still being in the area. Yes, yes, it's, it's, two, it's two different, uh, it's the same uh, uh, technology with the roller, but uh, it's uh, two different. One mm -hmm. is, for, is in 19 degree and the other is 45 degree. Mm -hmm. The 19 degree is possible to, to print uh, uh, a lot of piece, but uh, uh, the printer start, print one piece and then eject uh, the piece go back start again and yet go back start again and yet okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and with 45 degree it's possible uh, to print uh, endless uh, without uh, stop in in continuum uh, manner okay i get yeah mm -hmm. interesting it is uh, two different technology uh, but uh, is necessary all the two technology. Uh, one technology is uh, good for uh, uh, Syria, uh, 45 degree is a good for Syria, and uh, 19 degree is uh, good for a small Syria, very small Syria. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I've, um, I have, uh, so you were as so friendly and sent me the Steel Roller 45, so this uh, angled version. Yes. And I want to just briefly um, show it, I uh, hope I can do it uh, on the screen so everyone can see it. And let's just try this. So this is the kit. Basically, this is the base part. Um, and that I've built this yesterday because uh, I wanted to save some time today because otherwise we would have spent uh, about two hours uh, just building this base part. Um, but the, the trick about the space part is that it's basically built from, um, I think it's about 10 pieces or so, could be, um, 10 metal pieces. So there's a, a base frame here on the side and then we have um, these uh, side brackets here. Then we have uh, rollers, so two roller wheels that hold the steel belt. And this one, this is the heated bed from the original Ender 3 Pro and that's why I had to prepare it yesterday because you have to you have to build this and then you have to apply this tape here and this tape to apply this tape is actually not possible um, in with for one person because you have to uh, stretch it and then apply some um, yeah some water with uh, soap soap water and then you can stretch it here over get all the bubbles out and then you can turn it a bit and then do this procedure until you do this on the whole belt and that is that is not possible for one person alone or it's, it's at least for two people it's much easier so we did this yesterday evening to uh, and then it has to be drying i think 12 hours you say and so we left it overnight uh, and it's it's now it's everything is dry and that's why um, this is already prepared. But if you if you get this kit, then uh, it's basically coming in in single pieces, and then you have to also take apart your your printer. So just to show it to you, this is what's left of the <laughs> this is what's left of the Ender <laughs> 3 Pro. <laughs> we still have to we still have to do a little bit um, today. That's that's we have some work to do left today. So for sure, be sure we have some work. So we'll take this apart even further. So this is basically the angled part later. And uh, also the electronics. Oh, good one. Cable here. And also the electronics um, is, uh, is, everything is here. So I've got like the power supply, display, main board. Uh, I think we won't need this anymore. This is, um, this is the, I think yes, this is, this this is uh, no more uh, necessary. <laughs> yeah, this was the original yeah, yes. uh, holder or the, the axis. And that's, that's, that's what has been replaced actually by the belt system. Pretty interesting. Yeah. It yes, took me it, two hours yesterday to prepare this. Uh, probably you will be much faster if you do this. <laughs> but but uh, yeah. I, I think that is not so difficult. Uh, if you, there is a, a, a very uh, explicative uh, manual uh, mm -hmm. with a lot of uh, photo, and uh, I think that uh, if you read the, uh, the manual also, uh, there is a, a, a drawing uh, uh, 3D uh, part, so it's possible to rotate, uh, explode, uh, uh, and uh, it's necessary to have, uh, I think, uh, mm -hmm. half a day, one day, uh, and uh, there is no problem, I think, uh, to yeah. have a very, very good re result. Yeah, so the manual oh. is every really good. So I, I went through it yesterday, uh, was completely reading it um, from start to end, and it's 87 pages, so it's really a lot of steps uh, but every step is is really well explained it goes even into the depth of which i didn't expect but it really goes even into how to install a bootloader on yeah. the 8-bit mainboard so it really doesn't miss any kind of detail um, because you need to also change the firmware obviously for this so yeah. it's a really good manual and i had actually no issues here so there's driver installation upgrades here's the list of firmware for each uh, 
version of the mainboard. So it's really very detailed. Yeah. And how to set, this is actually something that we have probably to do today, uh, setting the voltage of the, yes, the belt right. motor. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, uh, we'll go from the top uh, and we'll see what's left to do, what I already done and what, what we need to do. Yes, I prefer to use uh, a uh, different motor because uh, uh, the motor uh, that uh, is inside the ender tray, ender tree, mm -hmm. uh, Creality is not uh, so good uh, motor. It's not, uh, uh, don't have uh, a lot of power. And mm -hmm. for, uh, for move the roller is necessary to have a lot of po power. And, yeah. uh, and also is a very, very uh, good uh, motor because it's a Sanyo and uh, have uh, uh, 55, uh, um, Yeah, this is, uh, this is oh. a motor. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's the same size, it's but is more uh, more power, more power. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So for that, we need to make some adjustments um, later. I can um, remember it's very yeah. very important. It's necessary to use uh, my cable because the connection from uh, uh, Creality and my motor is different. I see. Yeah. So we'll we we'll do that for sure. Yeah. Um, I think we're also coming to that later. We have one question that I want to at least briefly um, get uh, answered. Um, slicer software, which slicer software? I, I think from the manual I get uh, Simplify 3D, but is this, uh, you can basically use uh, other software if you're using the start cheat code that you provide, right? Yes, I have uh, tested a lot of uh, uh, slicer, uh, but uh, I think in this moment uh, only Simplify 3D uh, have uh, the correct uh, uh, G-code sequence uh, okay. because it uh, uh, is uh, ISO, ISO code and uh, a lot of other uh, in, in this moment, uh, slicer uh, with very, very long part uh, have some st step uh, that uh, is not uh, uh, correctly uh, ISO correct uh, G code. So I prefer to use uh, Simplify 3D. Uh, but I know I have seen another. Uh, but I don't have a test uh, in this moment. Uh, I see another uh, uh, slicer. Is uh, one moment. Uh, I uh, is uh, idea maker. Mm -hmm. Idea maker is uh, idea maker is also uh, good, but uh, is uh, too young. I think that is necessary to have uh, uh, a lot of uh, little uh, correction uh, because uh, it's good, but uh, is uh, too young. I think uh, <laughs> some some amount uh, uh, and uh, is it, very very interesting. Also, is interesting because uh, uh, it's possible to put support. Uh, uh, where is necessary, naturally, uh, automatically. I see. Mm -hmm. be, ca be careful. If you put uh, uh, automatically uh, support, uh, is uh, sometime, uh, all the time, not sometime, all the time, put support also where is not good to have support. So I prefer. Mm -hmm to move the part, uh, study uh, the correct position, and uh, uh, if it's necessary, a little support, I prefer to put support with the CAD uh, draw. Manual support. Yeah. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. I see. Okay, I, I think we're gonna get, or hopefully we're gonna get to that. <laughs> we're gonna reach that point in a reasonable amount of time. 
And um, so let's uh, let's see. I, th I think I have some question left uh, that I wanted to ask you. Um, yeah, the steel roller kit 45. Um, I think that's we talked about it. What does it contain? Um, I've, 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 I think I've mentioned it already. So we can show a little bit more of the kit here on the table, so everyone can see what is actually part of the kit. So part of the kit um, is. With this base system, of course, the the whole um, belt system, of course, the motor, the also this, uh, yeah, everything that is required to drive it, uh, except this uh, heated bed, of course, this needs to be uh, taken from your original printer. Then this is uh, some tool here to get the right angle later. So this is um, to f to fix to fix the, um, yeah, the to fix the Z axis in the right position. Here we have a presser, which is basically a presser um, bar that's later going to be sitting on top here and it's going to press this steel belt down so it's flat yes. uh, just right before the nozzle so it's really at the position where it's printing it's really flat. Um, but additional cables, these are motor cables and display cables and some holders so they, they we can strip the cables later to a better place underneath the printer. This is the angle bracket that's basically holding um, the end of the uh, Z axis in, in place. Yeah, so we're gonna mount yes. that as well. What else? Um, a new bracket for the extruder for the hot end that's gonna basically angle the hot end by 90 degrees um, compared to the original, so you will see that later. And uh, lots of lots of uh, additional screws. Uh, the good thing, uh, actually, what I discovered, uh, so really good experience, is that every little bag has its own. Um, it's labeled. Hope you can see it. And every step in the manual is actually referring to the the labeling on the bag. So if you are in a specific step of the manual, you just have to look for the bag containing. Uh, the same name. Well, so basically, the step says end stops at y axis, then it's going to be in the manual end stop y axis, and you will be able to identify the right bag of stuff. So I think that's really well made. That's also why I didn't have any issues. Yeah, because <laughs> I built a printer lately that had a few screws or uh, dozens of screws, and they were all in one bag. So that was not so good. And this is this is really nice. So you can you can't you don't have to search. Yes, I have time. I have a lot of aspects because uh, uh, a lot of here that I made uh, kit. So uh, I I know how is good uh, uh, to prepare. Uh, so the 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 customer don't have a problem. Yeah. Uh, also worth mentioning, there's an SD card coming with uh, the kit, so everything is on the SD card, as also as software. We're going to talk about the software in a bit. Um, the software is, uh, maybe you could also talk about it, but as far as I understood, there is a software that takes the output from Simplify 3D and then yeah. like converts it to yeah. uh, like yeah. 45 degrees, right? it shifts yeah. basically. Okay, okay. Uh, you start uh, with uh, Simplify 3D and uh, prepare the code and after that uh, there is a post processor that I develop uh, is a little program uh, that uh, you input uh, your code and uh, the software uh, the shifter uh, I the name is uh, shifter and move all the point in, uh, in the space uh, so it's possible to print uh, 45 degree. Interesting. I'm, I'm really curious how this is going to, to work. It's, um... it's very, very easy. It's uh, one minute. <laughs> so you prepare uh, your code and then uh, with the post processor you move all the point and it's ready to print. Mm -hmm. I see. Interesting. Interesting. So hopefully we're going to see that in a second. And also, sorry. Also, another thing, uh, uh, Shifter, mm -hmm. uh, also have, uh, uh, when you start, uh, 
input the code start uh, and uh, uh, inside there is uh, a uh, verification that mm -hmm. is, if the code is okay. If the code is okay, it's possible to use. And also it's possible to tell uh, how many pieces uh, you want. So uh, if uh, you have uh, uh, a job with uh, three different pieces in, uh, in one job, it's possible to tell to the shifter how many pieces you want uh, that the printer repeat the, the, same, uh, the same job. Mm -hmm. So it's possible without a problem uh, to have uh, continuous printing. I and see. If you have a, a bag in front of your printer, uh, you, you start uh, Wednesday and uh, Monday morning you have uh, a lot of peace uh, without a problem. It's not necessary to look uh, uh, and to see if I've finished or not, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, until you have a wire, it's possible to, to print uh, without a problem. I get it, okay. So, I would say um, a few uh, open questions uh, before we start. Uh, we should get going with the build uh, in a few minutes, so we can hopefully get it done. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that is, is still um, interesting to know um, about the costs, I think we talked about it. Uh, maybe you can talk about a little bit about what, what, what these kits usually cost, like roughly. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, is the, uh, the two different kits have two different costs. Uh, the 19 degree, uh, we have seen in the picture uh, uh, some time ago and mm -hmm. uh, uh, start uh, from uh, 400 uh, uh, euro and uh, mm -hmm. the 45 degree start uh, 469 uh, euro. I hope that it's possible to have uh, the same uh, cost uh, because uh, I hear for my uh, furniture that uh, a little problem to have uh, metal sheet. Uh, and uh, I hope that it's possible to have the same price uh, uh, for other time, okay? Yeah, I think we talked about it, that's, that it's currently difficult to get the materials in Italy. And um, yeah. so, yeah, but I mean, I would, we would, we wanted to have some kind of indication where the price is roughly. And I, I think that's, that's good to know um, because just, I mean, it is a steel kit. So it's, it's basically just, it's really a different kind of setup. So if you buy another belt printer, just as, just having a different material, it makes it more expensive. I think the, what so far uh, I see that the materials are really high quality and so it's probably fair in terms of the price that's that's my yes and, and naturally if you have uh, your printer why you need to buy another printer if it's possible with a little money uh, to change uh, have uh, a different printer uh, with with exactly. the good with the good quality of uh, Creality because Creality is uh, is good uh, if you uh, have uh, a correct uh, configuration uh, uh, a, li a little move uh, some part uh, and is uh, very very good. It's possible to print without a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this, this, is, um, this makes the process interesting. I, I would say for anyone who has an Ender 3 Pro or uh, you're even offering bigger kits, I think that is, that is still unique um, to have something that is, like this is the smallest one, right? And uh, yeah. there is also kits for like a CR10 or so if you really want, yeah. want to go yeah. big, yeah. Then, then I think this is really unique. So it's not nothing that is not so easy to get this currently in the market. So there's not many companies offering that. And yeah, yes, and naturally is uh, the only problem for uh, uh, this uh, kit uh, 
that uh, I tell uh, everyone that is for uh, Creality Ender Tree and Ender Tree is that uh, uh, is uh, the firmware mm -hmm. because uh, the hardware is very very easy to uh, adapt uh, this hardware for all the other machine, mm -hmm. okay, and all, also the other brand. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, for me, one of the difficult that I have uh, uh, is uh, a lot of different firmware. And uh, so I tell that it's possible uh, uh, Creality Ender Tree. Uh, but uh, uh, some customers have buy this kit and uh, have uh, and put uh, the kit in uh, Prusa. Hmm, interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, Prusa have, have a big problem for me uh, that uh, have uh, an. Uh, uh, Difficult uh, uh, firmware. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, last but not least, uh, last question: um, Export? Um, do you export this internationally? Yes, naturally. Every, every in every world, uh, in all over the world, mm -hmm. without a problem. Uh, we have uh, a lot of customer uh, around the world without a problem. Yeah. Um, we have another comment here um, that uh, Tut uh, M. Carmen he says um, problem with Simplify 3D is a little too expensive and very out of date compared to Cura. Um, what what do you say about that? <laughs> uh, a lot of uh, customers ask me: Is possible to use Cura uh, if you uh, study uh, ISO? Uh, G code uh, and uh, you uh, list all the code that Cura have uh, made. Uh, I think that there is uh, some problem. But if you want, it's possible also black belt Cura or uh, or um, Creality uh, software. There is no problem because uh, uh, it's possible to use. I prefer. Simplified 3D with my uh, um, post processor because uh, I am sure I have a print about more than one week without a problem. Uh, if you look around uh, in uh, YouTube, you see a lot of uh, other people that uh, use uh, 45 degree that with Cura, uh, Black Belt Cura, uh, have uh, a lot of a problem uh, for a very, very long part. Mm -hmm. this, okay, is my, yeah, yeah. this is my opinion, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, every, every person is possible to use every slicer. <laughs> but remember that is necessary that the slicer is able to print 45 degrees. Naturally, it's not, it's not possible to use a 90, a 90 degrees slicer with a 45 degrees slicer because mm -hmm. every point in the space is move. Mm -hmm. is the algorithm is, uh, is not so easy. Yeah, to, I can imagine. I, I won't, oh, yes. I, it's hard to imagine how to uh, change the program in that way. That's probably yes. quite some work. Idea, another... idea, idea, idea maker, I think that yeah. uh, is is uh, young, but I think that uh, is uh, the correct street uh, to use a forty-five degree printer. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can we can try later. Um, I think I would have to get a simplify license, um, but uh, we can also try with a different slicer if we have the correct start code. Um, mm. If we can do that. Um, let's see. Um, I think I'm not going to print something that is very long because that will take, <laughs> if it's endless, then it's also going to be endlessly long in terms of time. <laughs> yeah, so we, but... <laughs> we want to probably some, do, do something quite small so we get some, some print out, hopefully. Yeah. Let's see how far we can come. And. And yeah, uh, Roland, Roland has another question here. Uh, he says, uh, belt printer has issues with warping and the print sticking to the bed in general. I think that is probably a question of the surface material also, right? 
that you use. But uh, for sticking, uh, there is no problem. If you use uh, Capton, like uh, the same uh, that you have uh, used, mm -hmm. and uh, also it's possible to use uh, um, blue, uh, blue tape. I don't prefer blue tape because uh, uh, it is better Capton. And also, mm -hmm. if, if you want, it's possible a little, uh, uh, a little spray, a little spray like uh, 3D Lac, mm -hmm. uh, yes, 3D Lac or mm -hmm. uh, Dymafix is a too good uh, adhesive. But normally, I don't use uh, other than uh, Capton. And uh, if you see in my YouTube channel, uh, you see that it's possible to print uh, a long piece without support uh, uh, because uh, the attachment uh, to the captain is very, very good. Um, one, customer of, uh, one customer of mine uh, told me, I don't test but uh, have told me that with the 3d lac uh, the, the the 3d lac spray directly in uh, stainless steel hmm. and uh, have I, I needed to make some tests and also uh, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, answer to the the, the question uh, I think that the warping uh, is uh, warping uh, is uh, if you have uh, the correct uh, uh, temperature of uh, the plate uh, and uh, the correct temperature of uh, the wire, I think that warping is there is no warping. That's it. Yeah, I'm I'm curious. So let's. Uh, I I would say um, we'll we'll kick it off now to build. So um, I really don't want to wait anymore, um, and. We'll, we'll go as we can, as, as if anything comes up, if any problems arise, then, then uh, we'll go, we, we somehow make it through, I guess. Um, do you want to stay or um, do you want to stay in the chat? Um, you can go, uh, Andrea, you can uh, probably, uh, if you want, you can go to the live stream um, um, chat room um, while I'm doing the build. Um, um, and if you don't have more time, then it's it's also good. Then we'll see. Okay, uh, I very very uh, happy that uh, I'm here, and uh, so I uh, tell you that is better that I go away. Okay. If you have uh, some question, yep. is mm -hmm. write me and. Uh, I replay all uh, to all uh, the people without a problem. Uh, so yeah. I uh, put your YouTube channel link here in the chat. So uh, everyone wants to join Andrea's uh, YouTube channel and, and watch more about these upgrades. Um, then this is the link is already in the chat here. Uh, so yeah, subscribe to Andrea Martini's channel. <laughs> okay. And. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go and do the build now. Thank you, Andrea, for coming. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks for sending this. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm super, super excited. OK. If you have some problem, no, mail me and I replay every. Thanks for the support. Thank you. <laughs> OK. Bye. OK. See you. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. OK. Great. So, <laughs> so you see, um, he's a, he's a good guy. So he's he's really very helpful. And um, we have some question nozzle. Um, uh, Ronald has a question about the nozzle. Let me see where this question is. Here we go. If the set X Z bridge is tilted, then the nozzle will be tilted as well. Does this kit takes care of that? Will the nozzle remain perpendicular? to the belt 
So um, you can see this in the assembly. Um, well, I will show it to you. Um, let me quickly go to that place in the manual. That page is quite below, of course, quite at the end. Here we go. Here, this should be. Yeah, here you can see it. How it looks like. So it angle. It angles the the nozzle by. Uh, 90 degrees and when it goes down to the bed how does it look like here's some picture here it's here you can see it quite well um, this is how it will look like when it's touching the belt so it's uh, it's it's of course angled as well um, and it extracts the filament right here at the tip and then it moves basically backwards and up and backwards so the belt moves away from the nozzle, so it prints and then moves to the right um, if it continues printing. That's how it works. And that makes it possible to, like, if it wouldn't be angled, I guess, uh, it wouldn't be possible to, um, to print endless. Um, as he said, there's also a version that is printing perpendicular, and that is used for that is used for prints that like are not larger than the original size, like 20 by 20 or 22 by 22 centimeters. And then when, when the print is finished, then it moves away the belt to the side and or to the front uh, more precisely, drops the part off, and then it starts a new print. And that is then the nozzle is going to be perpendicular. Then it's like a normal printer with some endless uh, production uh, line. But this one is like the, the 45 degrees is not for for actually printing multiple parts that's not the reason to have it then you wouldn't need 45 degrees obviously it's for you want to print something that is longer than the actual print area so you can print some i don't know some <laughs> cosplay words <laughs> which i won't do because i'm not <laughs> into that hobby but maybe something else that is longer you know, sometimes it's just something you want to print something that is 25 centimeters or, or 30 maybe and then you can't print it diagonal anymore and then you you probably have an issue you need a bigger printer and this is going to solve the issue at least for like parts that are narrow and long good so um don't need these uh headphones anymore obviously so how does it um, how do we continue? So I, I told you yesterday I've prepared this um, this base already and I will go through the manual now um, and see what I actually missed or what I where I have to continue. Um, so what did we do? So we did partially disassemble the Ender 3 Pro. I've, I've, I disassembled the whole electronics case. Um, so all the um, let me see. So this is basically left. All the cables I disconnected. We'll use that later. I also got from the SD card that is provided. I've got the the firmware that is already prepared for the belt drive, and it's. Um, it's a it's original Marlin firmware with some adaptions, some configuration changes. So I didn't build it myself because it was already pre-built for this main board. It's 2072, I guess it's the version. And so it should be fine. And uh, there's no necessity to build your own firmware at the moment because you, it's, it's uh, just configured and should be working. Um, so let's see what, what's left in the manual to do. So I've done all the electronics uh, removement here, removals, I removed all the connectors. I've basically disassembled um, the end stop switch. Um, I disconnected the cables. I removed the display, it's here. I've also, um, yeah, I've basically opened this uh, shrink wrap so the cables are free. Here we have the connectors. So it's very detailed. So be, if you're honest, uh, some, uh, there's really every single little step in this manual. And then, yeah, this is the end uh, situation where you have 
uh, all these parts. This is what I have here. These are the parts that we will um, use more or less. The next step was to uh, disassemble the, um, the Y axis system. So this is what's left. We won't need this anymore. And I just used the heated bed from that uh, Y axis and I've put it, I've shown you already, I can show it a, a little bit closer. It's here underneath the belt. So these four screws go directly into the frame and that's why I had to do it before I could apply the belt and before applying the cup tone, I needed to get this out of the ender printer and that's why I had to do it uh, yesterday already because cup tone tape, as I said, to do that, it takes you two people to do this uh, because it's, it's, it's not easy. Uh, you have to stretch it and then you have to apply uh, soap water and then get all the bubbles out. You need this tool is actually really helpful. I don't know actually where I got it, but it was, <laughs> well, I think it's from some kind of wall uh, stickers. And here you see, um, yeah, that's what's left. Removing the connector protector here um, on the heated bed. So, yeah, cleaning that, of course, and then we, I think, this is what's actually to be done right now. Um, removing the upper part from the ender frame. So this is what's left of the ender. <laughs> it's just uh, the base frame, and as far as I get it, we need to start disassembling this as well and get this uh, lower part. I think it's also going away, so it's not, not, not used anymore. So if you go and fa uh, if you've done this, <laughs> or <laughs> if I have completed this, I can probably sell a few spare parts on Amazon, on, on, uh, on Facebook, because, yeah, I don't need it anymore. What to do with this? Good. So, is there any questions? Print a belt on the belt printer. <laughs> it's a comment. Well, if that would be possible, what material should I use to print a belt? Maybe TPU or something? <laughs> So, actually, um, hey, let's not drop this. Um, I want to welcome um, everyone here again in the chat, um, especially our moderators. Um, I see Cord, I see Toots, um, I see Slayer. Um, who else uh, from the Discord moderators is here? Anyone else? Probably not. And I've got grease on my hands now. So this is what's left, right? So this is the the upper part of the Ender 3 Pro. And um, I guess just looking at this part here that's uh, supposed to be the bracket, that's going to be somehow applied to this bracket later. Let's see. So I'll put this to the side for a second. We need some space here. Let's see, I've got all the original parts here in this bag, so not to lose anything. Court has a question. Uh, what do you plan to uh, print on it? Um, to be honest, I have no idea. So probably I will print something small. Hopefully it's gonna work out uh, that we can actually print something. Um, so we don't wanna lose too much time, but uh, Maybe a little test cube in the beginning just to get the uh, to get everything aligned so to see if it's at least working and um, that it's sticky and it's doing uh, the right movements in the right directions all these little things I think we should start with some kind of print cube 
test cube and then we should probably we can go for something like a benchy excuse me for a second And uh, then we could continue using uh, maybe a Benchy uh, as, a, as a first um, little model because it's not faster, right? So it's, it's going to be printing as slow as every other 3D printer. So I think it's, nobody wants to wait hours for, <laughs> for something to come out. Yeah, train with lots of cars. What I will do um, certainly is after we've done the build and after we've like, verified that the thing is working, um, I'm going to print something that over the next few days and, and I'll post updates about it on my Instagram so you can follow that a bit and see, hey, what's coming out? What, how is it going? Um, is there anything failing? And then hopefully I will be able to make a video in maybe two weeks or so. Um, that, that way I will show you um, the progress and maybe talk a little bit about how, what I think about it, how it's actually working, if it's good. So you have a little more insight uh, into this. Um, so let's actually go into the manual again and check what the next steps are. So I've removed the upper part. Um, the bootloader installation is not necessary for my main board because it's the, um, I don't know if you can see it, this is the 32-bit 427. I've done the installation recently in another video on the Ender 3 Pro. Um, but the good thing is if you're still, uh, if we would be on an 8-bit board, there's a very, very detailed guide how to get a bootloader installed and then how to install the firmware. Obviously for the 32-bit it's super easy because you just need to get the bin file to the SD card and then get it flashed by turning on the printer. I did that while the Ender 3 Pro was still um, assembled, so I didn't have to do it later. So um, that was everything was still connected, power supply and stuff. So a lot of people joining. Hello back. If you want, just post where you're coming from so everyone knows um, where you're from and um, what you like to do with 3D printing. Um, if questions come up, please put like uh, three hashtags and then question up front so I can see it a little bit better um, because it's sometimes hard to follow all the chat messages. So if you have a question, put hashtag uh, question up front and then I'll, I'll hopefully see it a little bit better or use multiple hashtags. Don't use too many because then YouTube will block you. <laughs> This, this is uh, YouTube. YouTube actually doesn't want us to spam a chat anymore. It's, it's really weird. If you're using uh, multiple emojis, then you can be, get your account blocked. So don't do that, please. Don't use multiple emojis uh, in one chat message. I've seen people getting blocked from, from that. Okay. People from Denmark, Holland, Canada, Arkansas, USA. Ontario, Slovenia, I've seen UK, um, let's see, thanks for joining, um, we're just in the progress of building this thing. So um, I'm just looking at the manual again, so I've been through the firmware installation, I'm just going to sc scroll through this, um, and there is also the trimmer adjustment. That is actually a thing that we have to do um, because the motor of this system, so this, this motor here is a different, this is different. We're not going to use the motor that's originally on the y-axis. Uh, this is a different motor. It uses more current. That's what Andrea told me. Uh, so we have to, we have to adjust the voltage of the driver and so the VREF and um, so that's something that's left to do and I'm curious how to do that actually I on these main boards I didn't do that yet but here it is in the manual it says 
if you want to adjust it, um, this should be the right driver because it's the silent board. So the voltage should be 1.411 volts. Like, I'm curious if my uh, voltmeter can actually <laughs> measure that correctly. I've just got a very cheap one. So we'll have to check. What do we have to prepare for this power supply? Power cable. Someone from Germany, Stuttgart. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Trap0815. Uh, some more people from Germany joining as well. USA, thanks for coming. So, uh, I think I will probably um, need to get... Uh, this is the only thing that I forgot in the, in the workshop. Um, just going to briefly get it from there. Um, the voltmeter and probably some screwdriver as it is described here in the manual. So, I'll leave you for a second and then I'll be back with the right voltmeter. So, I'm back. Um, we have a question from Court. Um, have you looked at this Creality CR30 belt printer? Yeah, actually, um, I did. And I've also, uh, I basically joined the Kickstarter campaign and the printer arrived two days ago. But I didn't want, <laughs> I didn't want to do a second one. So it's here, right? I have it. <laughs> it's literally standing uh, in the lab, um, but I didn't open the box yet. So I will definitely do this. Uh, maybe this is another live stream uh, topic. So we'll we'll do that. So I've got my voltmeter here. But uh, the CR30. Uh, the, so this wasn't. It wasn't sent to me. So I bought it. Like everyone else, I didn't get a preview. I didn't want it because I saw that uh, in the different reviews. Does it work? Yeah, so looks like the power supply is working. Um, in the different reviews that I saw about the CR30, especially this, these were all pre-production units, right? So um, I didn't want to test something that is not ready and there was some there was various issues so um I was like okay let's wait until it's like final and every every uh, at least the worst things have been figured out and then I'll I get the the, the final version and yeah so it's not about speed it's about the direction <laughs> so 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 to say I don't have to be the first person doing this um, do you think you will make a video comparing the Creality CR30 and the converter belt printer? Uh, yeah, actually, um, I have some other plan as well. Uh, let me talk a bit uh, more directly to you. So there is like the, there is the CR30, there is this conversion kit, 
and there is iFactory 3D. I don't know if you know the company iFactory 3D. They also have a belt printer system. They kind of developed it at the same time uh, like everyone else was doing it. So they, they, they are all kind of from the original idea of the belt system. So iFactory 3D is also interested in doing something uh, with me. So uh, maybe at some point in this year we'll have like three belt printers that we can compare and then um, see. But this, the, the iFactory is actually much more expensive. I think it's about 1000 euros or so. Uh, and even more, so it's, it seems to be a little bit more uh, in an industrial printer and not so much for like the entry level, yeah. Once both are ready, do you think uh, you will make, uh, yeah, this was the other question. Yeah, Wayne, do you have a belt printer? I, I don't know. I don't know the context of this. Um, so if yes, I would be interested to see some results. <laughs> Interesting. So let's let's continue. So question from my end is what's next? I have the power supply connected to the main board and uh, in the manual it says we need to adjust the VREF voltage. So now I actually need to figure out where I need to measure the voltage and uh, that is interesting how they how he was doing this is this actually this is the nice thing about the manual that's why I sometimes you you can appreciate a, a very detailed manual with a lot of photos so here you see um, he's connecting the voltmeter um, then he has the screwdriver unfortunately i don't have these clamp i don't have a clamp on my voltmeter i just have these bare pins or these measuring pins so i can't adjust the voltage at the same time turning the screwdriver and having this um, attached to the screwdriver actually clever idea i never thought about it that way but you can uh, he's using the screwdriver as his plus pin and adjustment um, tool at the same time actually interesting <sighs> let's see let's see i'm gonna measure first um, what voltage we have there this is the y axis pin i'm going to give you the close up view just to show you what i am doing uh, if you're doing it completely wrong please scream in this chat daniel <laughs> stop it so here is the minus pin and he's like putting it on this let me see voltage 20 here we go this should be the right one it's 1.20 okay 1.20 so and we need to go to what does it say um we need to go to 1.411 i don't i don't think that my voltmeter is that precise but it's at least uh it has two digits so 1.30 wasn't it 120? <laughs> it's like it's not very precise. I, I, I think it's a very basic voltmeter. So a uh, shame on me not having something that is more professional. So let's turn it just a tiny bit. So we need to do it iteratively. 1.55, okay. Oh, that is very sensitive, really sensitive thing to do. So just a tiny movement. Now it's one one thirty-five. Oh wait. This is barely barely a movement. Actually, it's barely one point forty-three. What do you think about it? Should we go? <laughs> Will it make a difference? One forty-five, one forty-six, one forty-seven. Why is it changing? There's some drift in this. 
Oh, okay. Maybe because I'm touching it and push it, push. Come on. Why is it changing? Yeah, I get it. Can I hold it at the same time and then measure and probe and turn? Let's see if that works. Can I can try. It works. That is good enough, I would say. 141. So, okay, so we've adjusted the voltage. Don't need that anymore. Next step in the manual. Um, let's see, we've done that. This is the steps I've done yesterday, so you, just for you to see how that works. Um, this is the, the, the base part, then um, you put the original heated bed on top, fix it with four screws, and then uh, from the bottom, here we have a cable where it's coming out. So, yeah, a lot of photos here. Also, make sure you align this, that it's really flat because the belt's going to run over it. Yeah, I hadn't, didn't have to do this, but if anything is like slightly off, <laughs> he, just, he suggests to adjust the, the angle a bit, but I, I was, it was perfect. I hadn't, didn't do any adjustments there. Then we have the Teflon uh, sticker on top of the heated bed. Um, I've done that as well, of course. Um, the pulleys were actually already assembled, so all of this I didn't have to do. It was already pre-assembled in the, in the box. Uh, yeah, I didn't use gloves. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a sharp edge, so this... this um, this belt is made from steel and it's very thin. Actually, don't see how thin it is actually, but it's it's quite thin and uh, well, obviously because it is a belt and uh, you, you probably be careful not to cut yourself here. And I, I managed to do it without gloves uh, because um, it gives you a better feeling for um, all these tiny screw heads and the bolts and the nuts. And that's, um, yeah, that's why I just went without and uh, yeah. Just be careful. Rear crossbar, here you can see how, how it starts. You, you insert this um, the, the tube and this is the belt system here. There's a little belt running uh, around here. This, uh, um, yeah, this wheel here. And um, here you see it a little bit more in detail. So this is where the belt is. And then you run, you, Basically push it through, adjust it, fix it, uh, insert the motor here on the side. I've done that also. Um, make sure that you yeah, basically leave it uh, loose as long as you didn't adjust the belt. And then you have to adjust the belt position so it's like perfectly on that axis in the right position. So it's, it's like aligned and going in a straight line here. And then the front tube positioning, um, that is yeah, where the stretching of the belt begins. So you start with inserting it here and then you have to start stretching it out so it gets flat. Um, and the, the tightening system is actually pretty clever. I'm going to show it to you uh, in a sec. But it's basically you have these, um, these blocks here, which are... You can use them to actually fix um, or do you have a distance block. This, I think that's what they originally are designed for. So just to, to, uh, uh, um, to fix these blocks on a rod and then to like basically hold something in place. But uh, he's using it for a different purpose. He's putting in uh, screws from the front. And then these screws are going to pull these blocks towards the front crossbar. And that's going to stretch the belt. So I'm going to show it to you in a sec. Here we go. Um, so we don't need this anymore. Let's put this aside. 
Okay, some screw fell to the ground, so we'll have to see later. Um, so this is the front screw. So there's some covers here. And that's how it works. So you have these um, you have these blocks here, and then the screw is going into the block, and then you have this uh, nut here, and the nut is basically pulling the belt in this direction, and then you can just ad adjust this, the belt tensioning, so it's already pretty much tensioned. But you just have to turn it from here, and then it's like stretching the belt. It's very simple. The only thing to do, and I think this is the same problem with all the belt printers, um, when the belt isn't perfectly straight, so if like this side is more uh, tensioned than the other side, the belt is slowly going to shift uh, into one or the other direction. So if it runs, then you will see it moving, right? It's gonna like move a little slightly towards this direction or it's gonna move slightly towards that direction when you run it multiple times. And then you can adjust the tensioning so it's really straight and then it doesn't, move, it doesn't shift anymore. Uh, and I, I guess that probably over time you will have to readjust this. So what kind of screw did I lose? Uh, I can see it, okay. So I'll, I'll get it later. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens sometimes. Good, let's see, next step um, in the manual. So yeah, these are the, the sidebars. Um, this is basically something that is uh, left and right from the heated bed. Yeah. And then we have uh, insertion. Yeah, this is, this is basically where these additional Teflon parts are inserted. So the belt is, is uh, still running on top of these uh, smoothly. What's the next thing? Uh, yeah, this was the thing I've just shown you, the tensioning of the belt and then uh, applying these protective nuts here. And um, then there is a, there's a separate document. Um, I didn't read it yet. So if we encounter any uh, kind of problems with the belt um, shifting towards the side, then um, uh, we can go and see what he, uh, the game adjustment, I think it's just if, if this thing has play and then if uh, it's not running in, the, in, in one direction or if it's not running in a straight line. And yeah, so preparation for assembly base. Um, yeah, I was wrong. We need that part. Yeah, I remember. So we need the base part to adjust insert the t-nuts so let's see i'll need a little bit more space here so this is the this is the part in the manual so according to the manual we need to insert some t-nuts Good thing about the manual is if you're looking for something, here's the headline and usually you just have to look uh, on these bags here and find the right, just same writing on the back. Let me see. Steel roller fixing. So, what do we need? Mm. Insert the T nuts into the profiles as shown in the figure, both on the left side. So, I was just talking about the manual and I think we can take steel roller fixing V2. These should be how many? One, two, three, four. I want to this one. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, this is ten on each on the whole thing. So let's see in the chat. Any questions? Can there be geared, say, on the edge of the belt to make sure it aligned or go in reverse, etc.? Uh, probably the question means if you can have some parts here that are holding uh, this in place. And I think there's like if there would be anything blocking this from moving, let's say you would have some part here like a metal sheet or something that would be like making sure that this doesn't move in the, in the wrong direction. I think it's it would be a bad idea because that it would scratch all the time. Let's say there's a lot of like it would try to move in this direction over time and that would be something blocking it from here that would probably wear off the belt. So it's better you the belt runs straight on its own without any additional help uh, keeping it there, right? Yeah, but it's it works. And it's razor sharp, yeah, that's exactly the thing. It's really sharp, so this, this edge here, like if that goes towards these little screws here, and let's say it runs all the time, probably it's gonna cut them off. I don't know, but it's, it's, it's really a super sharp edge here. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the kit is uh, about 47 euros for the 45 degree. Um, and the 400 is uh, for the vertical version. So, yeah, I think that's okay. So we'll have these T-nuts here roughly positioned. Um, we have three more. The question, how do I insert it from that side? Probably I need to get it open. Let's remove these plastic covers if we can. Huh. Not so easy. Well, we need a different tool for this. Something that is going to help me push it off. Okay. So we can keep this for later and apply them later. Plastic covers. I have to remove them, it's a little bit, uh, I think that is um, in the manual, I can't quite see it if it's already the right side, but if you want to, if you want to have these T-nuts on the, both sides at some point, then uh, they don't, they don't slide. So if you want to have them here, uh, this is actually blocking the T nut, so so let's let's keep it like that. I mean, it's probably symmetric, but it's not one hundred percent symmetric because there is this screw hole here. Um, that is, I think that's the screw hole for the electronics case, and I'm don't I don't know yet if we need that. Uh, so I mean, it doesn't it doesn't matter. So we have to insert these T nuts, and according to the manual they are going to be here on the side so two more here yeah and it's not really symmetrical also from the from the bottom there's this uh, opening here so let's let's do it like it's it's 
it's shown in the manual. So the originally the covers were on the left side. So a little more work here. And the other side as well. So these are the inner slots. Okay, so it's, uh, let me see, symmetrical, two on the top. Okay, so let's not turn it so they don't fall out. And what's next? Let's see, in the manual, this is the right side, exactly. Um, preparation for assembly, upper structure. Okay, so we'll use this. Now we'll apply the upper structure. Let's put these screws to the side. What are the screws for the upper structure? We need four screws. Four. Probably this, this kit here, fixing. We have another bag here with end stop, no. Okay, Y axis stop. Actually, there's not much left uh, in terms of uh, screw bags, so we are probably reaching the point where this is getting uh, done. Okay, so let's see how this is going to be um, aligned. Uh, yeah, hey, Ethan's, Ethan's dad, Marcus, is here. If you remember, Marcus, um, he's, he's, uh, he did um, write an application for the iPhone that's called uh, EM3D. Um, I did a review on that app, so it's a scanning app for for the iPhone, and uh, so it can I can use the front scanner of the iPhone, so not the not the back side scanner, which is the new one on the 12 Pro. But actually, everyone who has an iPhone since were in 10, they have a, basically you have a 3D scanner here. And if you didn't know that, now you know. And uh, Marcus, he's written an app. Um, to use that uh, front-facing um, Face ID camera for scanning stuff. So, Ethan, uh, uh, Marcus, if you want, uh, post, uh, post a link to, to the App Store uh, so people can check it out. Or if you can't, I can also do that for you because it's a really nice application. So what's next? Um, I'm just double checking if I had the right screws. I have a little bit of a doubt that I'm missing some back here. I hope not. So, how many screws are here in this kit? Hmm. Mm. This is 12, and this is 4. 8 M5 T nuts. I'm just curious how many T nuts do we actually need? 8. Which is strange because I don't have any T nuts. Uh, not many actually, not, not that many left. So I hope that I didn't miss any back here on the table. Let me see. So I have 10 T nuts here. This is probably the right thing. This is a, like how many were, were these? I want to remember five, six, five, ten. These are 10 T nuts. And. Uh, 
12 screws, 4, 4. Huh, I hope this is not missing. You know what? I'm gonna double check in the package if I if I somehow left it in the in the package. Let me check. Let's better double check and if uh, hopefully nothing is missing. I mean, I have T nuts here. It's not an issue. I have enough stuff here. So we have to to get it here. Yeah, Ethan, he, uh, Ethan's dad, Marcus, he can't post a link, so I will do it for you. Uh, EM3D app store. Yeah. This is the app. That's the app that I tested and that should work so unfortunately one thing that is um i'm not sure why it is missing from the kit but um i mean it's it's not super it's not super critical hopefully i have t nuts and the appropriate screws here so if there is a few T nuts missing, then this is this is unfortunate, but um, it's hopefully not gonna stop us from finishing this. Uh, yeah, I mean let's just let's go ahead and use T nuts that I have here because I think they will still work. So um, let me check. Socket button head screws and T nuts. <sighs> Strange enough, there is a bag here, which is a cross cylindrical head screw for the Y axis reference. This is the bag for it. And this is here, so this is not missing. But on the other hand, I'm missing, I'm missing probably one bag with. Uh, few more screws and t-nuts but I mean that's okay but I'm gonna give that feedback to Andrea um, and I will use my own t-nuts here hopefully uh, this is still going to work but the only thing is the only issue that I have I only have I don't have flathead screws here so let's see where these actually are supposed to go and if they are hopefully not blocking blocking anything in terms of making something not moving because these heads are so so large but this is this is hopefully not an issue okay so we have i think we should have everything here partially screwed t-nuts on the screws passed through the sides holes and both on the right side and on the left side. Here we go. Probably this is good. I mean, this, this is still working. Although it's bigger, it's bigger T-nuts or bigger, bigger screws, but yeah, let's see. Yeah, Andrew Hayes, he says, first I have seen of this mod. Um, yeah, I, I've also not seen it besides the channel. I've just, I've posted uh, Andrea's YouTube channel up, uh, up here. I can also just do it again. Um, Andrea Martini, he is uh, yeah, basically the inventor of this kit. He has a little company in Italy. 
and that company is called Robot Factory and they produce these kits and uh, or he I, I actually don't know how many employees I didn't ask him should have asked him if he has some employees or if it's just a one-man show so we have applied these four screws Check that there is enough play to slide the nuts into the profile roof. So, okay, I get it, hopefully. So we we'll need the upper section of the Ender 3 now. This is it. So this is the Ender 3 uh, upper part and it should be sliding here on top hmm. seems to work fine from that perspective it looks good probably a little bit tricky to get the t-nuts aligned but it, it looks good What's next? Um, probably this is going to stay here in that position. Let's check what the next steps are in the manual. So I've tested, basically I've applied these T-nuts here. I've um, Uh, yeah, I tested whether this is sliding in and then slide them to the stop and tighten the four screws to lock them. So, I get it. Uh, hopefully I'm getting it right. So, here we go. We'll turn it a little bit so you can see it. This is the lower part of the frame. And now we can... We can fix this part. The question is, can I use my bigger screws that have the, the, the thicker head instead of the flat head ones? Because these were missing in the kit for some reason. But I, I will just go for it and use my, my screws here and then we'll see. I, I hope it's not blocking anything. The question to you um, is, was everyone here from the start or did people join late? What did you miss? <laughs> yeah, he's coming. Dude, you are coming again with the hot glue or the super glue. <laughs> I think today we're not gluing anything, hopefully. <laughs> yes, yeah, Slayer, you missed the interview. I think it was a nice, um, it was really nice to talk to Andrea. He's the founder of the, the company, Robot uh, Factory. But you can watch it later. It's, um, it's going to be live after we've done the stream. Actually, I have no idea how long this is going to take us to get it. It looks, I mean, it looks like we're like on a good way. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm positive about that we'll make it to the point where this is hopefully moving. Uh, it's, oh, okay, I, I probably got a tiny problem here. Hmm. 
because these are a little bit too long. Here it's fine on the top. These are these are okay because they are there's enough room to go in, but on the side these uh, I think it's M5. These seem to be a little bit too long. Let's let me double check. Yeah, they are a little longer uh, than the ones that is provided in the kit. So, getting creative. Uh, don't want to actually go and and cut them or some. So, this is this is probably not good. So, what I'll do. Um, I'll use the other ones and then I everyone cross fingers <laughs> that we, we can use them somewhere else or uh, we have to leave some screws out I, I, I don't hope we don't have to do that and then I guarantee you that at the end of the build this this mystery bag with the screws that I'm missing now is gonna appear somewhere like every time gonna suddenly appear and then yeah you know then gonna be angry at me yeah add a few washers um, I'll have to see if I have that many um, that fit it could be like let's let's check how much is actually left here how, how much space do i have <sighs> not a bad idea actually um let me just go to the workshop and see if i have these washers probably two washers will do the job Servus, thanks for the idea. Um, sometimes it's really good to have a community instead of being alone. So I'll just briefly go to the workshop and I'll fetch some washers uh, right back.
Hey guys, I'm back. So, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to the toilet. I had some, I needed some washers because the, there is actually a bag of screws and some uh, T-nuts missing in the kit for some reason. And I said it already, it's probably, they're gonna probably appear later when we don't need them anymore. So let's try to fix this issue by using some washers on the screws and then hopefully we get the problem fixed. Uh, thing is I had I used so many of these washers lately in another project that I'm hopefully having enough of them now. Um, but yeah, it looks like it's at least enough. So let's try first if this is at least working. Let's briefly use one and try it out. Seems that one washer is, is not enough, so we need two. We need intermission music, yeah. Sorry for not uh, having that. <laughs> we need, if that would be a thing, like, then I would need to at least one more person here in the studio helping me and doing like moderation and chat uh, and uh, the technical stuff um, doing the cut over <laughs> yeah hopefully I have enough of these washers that the thing is I've used all of the washers most of the washers in another project recently I said so I'm I'm not sure to be honest if I have enough I have a, a few here, but uh, it could be it could be that it's not enough. It could be, and we need to be creative, like using a smaller one and then a bigger one, like the comp. Ah, here we here we go. We have some more. We have some more, and they have to fit on these uh, big screws, of course. The one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so there's one more. Actually, this one is actually pretty thick. Probably this is, this is really, really thick. This is probably already enough to use one. And the last one. Let's see which one we can use. I have a little bit of thicker washers here and a little thinner. Probably one of the thicker ones is, is is good enough. And this is too much. This is a bit too much. Yeah, it's a bit hacky, but it will do the job, I, I would say. <laughs> Not the beauty, the most beautiful assembly in that regard. <laughs> Monty Python intermission. Okay, it looks like I have enough washers. They are different. Not all, not all the washers are the same, but they should be doing the job. Okay, and let's try it again. Mm. Looks good. Here we are again. Here on the top we don't have an issue with the larger screws. So let's try fixing this, these screws here. Now this looks good on the side, on the other side it also works. Works fine. So it, it's good. We have problem solved. 
<laughs> yeah, Slayer, thanks for the tip. Definitely. I should buy more washers because now I, I definitely don't have any any left that probably will help. And if the, another bag missing, <laughs> then we have some issues. Okay, so let's tighten that up. There was a few. I mean, you probably remember that. Oh man, I, I, my hand is full of grease now. This, this is ah this is so ah, this is so awful about the Ender 3 Pro that the the lead screw is covered with with grease and every time you like try to you always touch the printer in the wrong place right you always touch this thing the lead screw and then you have grease all over your hands <laughs> I hate it. Okay, everything is 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 uh, tightened. I'm not sure if this one is actually good. I hope that the uh, let's 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 go back one more time. Sometimes these T nuts don't block. Yeah, now it's it's better. It seems that the T nut wasn't really locking. Okay, so I've got some grease here on the table and on my hand. Let's get rid of that. Good. <laughs> we should make a playlist. Rasmus is actually here. If you didn't know that and I didn't know that you're joining today. So please welcome Rasmus, he is my editor. Since... I think it was the Ender 3 V2 review. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that this was the video. Still having grease on my hands. <laughs> So we just should definitely have some some <laughs> playlist. Yeah, good idea, Rasmus. What we can do? Actually, we can have a playlist uh, of music that we play in the background um, on low uh, on uh, low loudness, and then we'll uh, at least if I have to go to the toilet and we can still listen to the music. <laughs> yeah. And Rasmus, he's awesome. He's, a, he's an awesome editor. Let's see. Uh, I really like this. This changed so much for me, to be honest. Um, still not getting more videos done, but <laughs> because like if you get an uh, editor, you like you, I, you just have, you have more time, but then if you're investing your time into more complicated stuff, then not getting more done but hopefully this is going to improve <laughs> it's all my fault so we have fixed this uh this bracket to the original printer frame the original y-axis after aligning the top edge with the profile tighten the relevant screws uh, this looks good this is seems to be in the right place Um, remember to tighten on the motor side the screw that will serve as a reference for the position of the y-axis limit switch. Uh, yeah, I, I, I see where this, is, where this is happening. Here on this side there is the motor and there's one opening here, a little one. And yeah, I remember this from reading the manual. There is another... Oh, my table is getting messy. Oh man. Let's move stuff away. Okay. 
I guarantee you, this 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 missing screw back will at some point appear. I I, I still believe this, this is almost guaranteed. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, uh, the screw that will serve as a reference to is there a picture for this. Ah, uh, here, here we go. This is um, this is the screw that he's talking about. Um, this is a separate bag. There's a little limit switch. So this long screw here is there for um, getting the position of the Y or what is this? Is this still a no Z axis? To getting the Z axis limit switch that's like supposed to be here on the side. It's like getting the distance right. So this needs to go in. Yeah, my bench looks bad, and that's true. Can actually zoom out a bit more. Like, and we need some elevator music, right? So, which like in the boring phases of the videos, we can play that. I was also thinking about like, in Germany, there was a famous guy, television, he had this uh, board and in front of him. Uh, every time something happened where he wanted to make a comment, he didn't make a comment. Actually, you just press the button and then there was some, some uh, little short clip playing, giving the comment, basically. So I'd love to have that at some point. Just smashing that button, like... <laughs> What's the bag tucked under the keyboard? Yeah. Is this the bag? I'm gonna check. Peter, you're making me a little bit nervous. <laughs> no, no, this is this is just an empty. This is just empty. <laughs> it's not. It's not the one that I was looking for. Sorry, disappointing you here. Um, good. So we have uh, inserted this this distance screw. Um, later we have to adjust that. Uh, um, okay, uh, manual. Let's okay, let's have a look at the manual. So the, here it's explained. Uh, you see, there's so many pictures. And yeah, he was right. He told me, uh, Andrea. He told me that uh, make sure you really read it uh, every step, because there's so much detail on the manual and you don't miss anything. So I think we we're, we're good here. So this is the screw. It's in. Uh, all these have been fixed. Uh, tightening, yeah, I've done that, good. This is the reference, um, this is the long one, yeah. Present assembly of the feet. That is something that I was reading and then a little bit later, this is actually not required for the Ender 3 Pro. Um, yeah, because these feet aren't in the kit on purpose, so this is just for I guess the V2 or Ender 3, yes, here it is. So it's just for Ender 3. The Ender 3 V2 doesn't get these feet. Then next step, electronic enclosure. Remove the top right screw. So we get some space here to put this to the side for a second. And continue with the build. So, I'm looking on this frame again and I'll remove this screw here, the top, the top right. So interesting enough, like on the Ender, Ender 3, there's actually just two screws here. The, these are like in diagonal uh, aligned and the Ender 3 Pro has four. Um, and yeah, top right screw from the left side because it seems that there is going to be the new place for the electronics case. This is making the printer a little bit bigger or wider, so to say.
Okay, so drill an additional 3.5 millimeter hole if not present, only if you are opting in the free. We don't have to do that. Then we have a little bracket coming here to hold the case. Which one is it? This should be the bracket. Yeah. This is it. Additional support. So the additional support bracket. And where is it going to be fixed? With the new screw. Okay. Makes sense. And we're going to fix it. Under the belt. So we're still looking for the bag of screws. Well, I screwed up so much. Um, this is, I don't know. Um, no, I'm, it's not under the belt. It's like, no, it's not. <laughs> you can't think, this is going to be the running gag, right? I'm looking for the bag. No, it's not here. It's like, is this missing? German water. So <laughs> can we check it? So we have this bracket here. Um, this is good. It's mounted. And um, next. See, now <laughs> you can use glue. <laughs> no, I'm not going to use. No, it's not on the floor. Come on, it's not here. It's not here. It's, it's really not here. I, I know that there's one screw behind this. Uh, I can see it. Like, it's one screw. I've, it fell down before, like in the beginning of the stream. Let's see if we can like get around the problem later. <laughs> okay, so the bracket is mounted. Okay, container is now to be fixed here. Where is the container? Here is this. Um, no, this is the lower part. Let me see. Ah, this is a little bit different in case of the ender three i'm not sure if this is actually this is ender three and the three where is it for the ender three pro is it for uh, here i think this is the picture that's actually this is something to i, I guess this is something to improve for this bracket is actually yeah, I mean the color doesn't matter. The, the bracket here is black, but there this, this is this is still the correct one because it's, it wasn't a lack of additional support. But it is yeah he is right. This is the actually the wrong place. Hmm. Okay. I can always use cable ties, yeah, maybe. <laughs> this, yeah, I know. I mean, we can, we, everything can be fixed with glue. Actually, I got super glue lately. Is so it really good super glue? What is like? What is really nasty about the about the the, the Creality Ender Three? Sometimes this whole thing is wobbling. It's just not flat and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to release all the screws now and really get it flat in the first place 
because later I think it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult to fix this problem. Sometimes, then, if you realize in the beginning when you get this printer, it's like it's wobbling around on the table, and then the, the reason is because initially the frame wasn't fixed or it wasn't aligned well. Maybe my table is different than reality table, but let's see. Better now, not perfect. Maybe also the rubber feet are not really flat anymore, or they were never flat. Okay, mm. here we go. So this one needs to be removed. I was actually doing it for the wrong printer model. Uh, so, I hope this is the right position. Is this going to be placed here? Yes, looks good. So, electronics case will be on the left side of the printer. And here's the support for it. And that's why it's important when, when getting this kit, uh, uh, I was like, I mean, I never checked the every single detail of uh, the end of 3 versus the end of 3 Pro. Um, like if every single screw is in the same position, but actually it seems to be that there are slight differences. Um, and it makes really a difference. So if you're getting this kit, that's what Andrea told me, it really is important to know exactly your printer version because uh, of these tiny differences in the, like where is this to be mounted. Um, so otherwise it just doesn't fit. So the, this is the support. Rest the container and fix it to the front with the screws previously removed. Uh, that's just a front one. Good. Let's do that. This is the step. Okay, so the container here, the electronics box fixed now. That is actually the, the second screw is now missing because it's like behind my uh, my rack. I'm gonna look for it eventually, but it's not like I don't care now. <laughs> Next step. Um, we're gonna secure the new column. So this is the distance piece that's going to be uh, important to hold it in, like to hold the top part of the electronics box here. So uh, we'll need one of the screws now. So this is the part I'm talking about. Is this the right distance? Let's double check.
you see there is like all these details right so this is this the distance part this seems to be different also for another printer at least it's, it's a little bit the manual looks different but it holds the cover of the display in the right distance so thinking about every single detail which is which is interesting it's like so much work to figure all these things out if you if you're designing such a kit so the main board is already in place so i don't have to do that uh, it's there power cable replacement so coming to the dangerous part So what are we do, supposed to do? Um, seems to be that the power cables on the power supply are too short. And in the kit, are there any longer ones? seems so that this is a replacement cable for the power cable and that's actually good because this cable connector like you probably remember I think I have posted this on Instagram on my on my v1 this um, this connector um, check somehow uh, melted away um, I, over time so it wasn't probably low quality and V1 was probably not a good quality of the connection and uh, also the way how it's connected to uh, the, the cables to the end here probably changed that but still I mean it's, it's like you can sleep safer if you don't have these plastic connectors in between so we're gonna get rid of this this whole cable so I can also remove that and we're just probably connecting the new power cable directly to the main board. Come on. Okay, so removing this cover. Where is the right driver? Here we go. Andrew says, um, there's a kit, there's a version for the Ender 3v2. However, if you were using, if you're buying a printer just for this kit, then the voxel lab aquila might be a better option as it is a clone well the question is is it a one to one clone is it really like absolutely identical because you've seen what i've just shown it is probably really critical that like you you, you really get the kit for the for the for the exact version of of the printer and I don't know if like is 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 like is it just a clone and it's like tiny bit different and then this kit won't work anymore that was that was the thing that Andrea also said to me this it's really super important that you remember that the kit is really just made for this one model and it doesn't work with the with any other model and so so I don't know about this printer about the uh, voxel lab um, how much they like are really identical or if they are just kind of similar and then then you have some disappointment there this is something that 
you probably have to ask Andrea directly because he, he will probably be able to tell you if, if he can make, like maybe he can just adjust the kit for the printer, but he probably would have to have the printer himself. So, what I'm doing right now, just to tell you what's going on, I'm replacing the power, so the 24 volt cables that go to the power, from the power supply to the main board, because these, um, this is a longer cable. It has to travel a, a larger distance, and so it needs to be replaced. Um, and it will be also just a single cable instead of the cable with the plug that was originally on, on the printer, which is a little bit safer. Unfortunately, you have to unscrew the terminal screws here. It's, yeah. Good. Is there a kit for the A8? Huh. Is there a kit for the eight? We have to check. Can you go to the website and check it out for us? I'm giving you the link again. Robot factory. I think it's robotfactory.it. Yeah, here we go. Slayer is asking, yeah, is it is it available for DA8? And I'm not sure, but you can check out the homepage of uh, Robot Factory. And Porphyrus, he's also one of our mods. Um, yeah, he says it's this is such a long job. I, I agree. Um, I had no idea. To be honest, how long it would take me. Um, the thing is, I've 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 decided to build it as 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 much as I can in this live stream. If we figure that um, I can't finish it, like I mean, I only only have so much time, and if I like, if everyone gets tired, then. <laughs> We'll probably have to uh, to do another stream. I mean, I have no issue doing a second stream to continue um, the build if you if you uh, agree. We can agree on a new date and say, "Hmm, let's uh, let's continue." But I, I would say uh, let's go for another forty-five minutes. Let's go for another 45 minutes, at least until 11 or so, and um, let's see how far we come. I, I have the feeling that we're making some, some progress now. We were somehow blocked by the, the fact that I had to do some replacement for the, for the, for the missing T-nuts and the missing screws. Lost 10 minutes there. So far we are like, hmm, how much time did we spend already? I think we started at 40, 8.40, uh, yeah, one and a half hours maybe. Good, so power cable uh, replaced. This is the new uh, cable here. No, I'm not giving up, I'm not giving up. Okay, um, where's my manual? Here my manual. Okay, I've replaced this cable. Yes, and now steel roller fixing to the structure. Okay, it gets interesting. I think we're getting to an interesting part. So, 
I hope that this time I'm having the right steel roller fixing V2. So, what do we need? 4 M5 screws, 4 M5 T nuts, 4 oversized washers, and 4 small washers. This is all for mounting this. Hmm. Maybe I wasn't, like, maybe I'm not missing, actually not missing a bag. Let's see. As we will see what, what's left in the end. I have some feeling about that this is this is there was some screws that were in the wrong bag, but or maybe these four T nuts here. But at least at least these four T nuts that were that I was taking from another bag. These four T nuts here, they are already they are also here in this bag, so this is gonna be left over. These are actually the four T-nuts that I was missing on the other part. Hmm. Let's, let's see. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm curious. Maybe, maybe we got some parts left in the end and we can disassemble everything. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. So move the four... No, I mean, no, it's, it really mentions like four, four T-nuts. Move the four previous T-nuts inserted where the steel roller will be fixed. Front eight distance about 50 millimeter from the front, rear 45 millimeters from the rear. Interesting enough, the electronics case isn't mounted in this picture. Place the larger five diaphragm washers on the progress corresponding to each nut. Uh, line to the steel roller structure to the base structure, making sure that it's parallel with the space equally distributed between right and left, and that the front protrudes from the base about 148. Securely lock the screws with both on the right side, both on the left side. Position the previously compared structure, slide it into. I mean, where is the another mm, washer going? I'm not convinced. Uh, to be honest, I'm I'm not convinced that I found the missing thing. I mean, I found four nuts, but I'm still missing the screws, right? Let's see. Four screws, four nuts. Okay, move the four. Like I'm moving these to the position. Okay, I probably have to. Check the distance here. So, 50 millimeters front. I think this is just approximately to uh, to make it easier for me to to insert it. We have 45 in the back. Okay, next step, we have the washers placed here on top, seems so, another four here. Okay, now we get the steel roller, uh, just a second, in which direction? That's a little bit confusing. Front, where's front? Front is 50, rear is 45. So supposed to be, this is supposed to be the, the rear, right? This is supposed to be front, so I didn't get that wrong. And, but the picture is now reversed because like where the power, uh, where the electronics box is, is actually front on the picture it's reversed. Um, so I will turn this around. Ah, now this is where the big mistakes happen, right? Got 
gonna give you the bigger view. So this is the front. On the picture it's like reversed, but it's still same, still okay. And I need to align these, like this is probably the part which is a little bit nasty. But these washers have to be aligned with the T-nuts. Uh, probably gonna start on one side and just start with the, with the first side and then the second one. Hmm. Interesting enough, in the manual it says uh, we have four oversized washers and then we have four washers, right? So place the larger washers on the profiles. That's, I did that and then rest, like uh, press it first and okay, and then, then we'll have the screws. So where's my stuff here underneath? Okay. So we'll start with the first one. We'll start with the first one here. Okay, number two. The distance is actually a little bit longer. Okay. Uh, take the screws from another printer. Hmm. Which one? <laughs> should I should I disassemble printers for this? Seriously? <laughs> okay, I'm not I'm not tightening up these screws yet. Just making sure that I'm hitting the and nuts and then nothing is actually I, I think we will have one a washer left or so yeah, maybe or another screw I'm, I'm still curious how many screws and uh, stuff I'm going to be, have left at the end that's I think I mentioned this last time uh, like every time you disassemble something and then you reassemble and then you figure oh I've got uh, one or two screws left why is this a good one no it's not good <laughs> okay Steel roller goes on top. Mm. Wrong X driver. And last one here. Okay, so what, where do I fix it now? Which distance does he talk about? Align the steel roller structure to the base structure, making sure that it's parallel to the side profiles with a space equally distributed between left and right. And that the front protrudes from the base by about 148 millimeters. So it should be that Parallel to the side profiles. Oh, okay. I think he's talking about like centering it here. And then we have the front protruding about 148. Hmm. So how much is it protruding? I'd say 145. Questions where he's as he where is he measuring that? I would say he's measuring that um, here at this side profile because it, from the picture it doesn't look it doesn't look like it's protruding any further. So do you agree that this is like this looks like it's like five millimeters away from the structure? 
like five millimeter away from the profile and um, I'm measuring like from here it looks it looks like it's about a few millimeters and if I measure 148 then I'm basically measuring here at this little part here yeah looks good <laughs> Wayne, what are you talking about? Are you talking about a robot that that you can control to look around uh, in the studio, like, hey, where are the screws that Daniel is missing, or what is what's the idea? <laughs> I mean, that sounds like an awesome idea, like to have something that you can control uh, over the web. Actually, I was like, I had a, um, where was it? I think there was a project that was a little robot that you can, that was in a sandbox, like literally in a, in a box, in a huge box where uh, there was stones and, and corners and, and sand and so on. and you were controlling this mars robot over the web and everyone like could people could vote for the next move right so it was like it was waiting for 30 seconds you could vote for like should it go right now and then if if people voted for right then then it would move um i don't know how much like 10 degrees to the right and then you could vote again and press a button and then like it wouldn't be just you controlling the robot's direction, but it would like the majority of people voting for a certain direction would move it after the 30 second voting period, which I think it was just awesome. Like it was an awesome idea. And then you like could look together for some treasure. <laughs> I like it. So I, I guess I, I'm, I'm done with this part. I've locked it. Hope it's in the right position. Then next uh, next step is to position this um, position the vertical structure, this one, um, and position it here. Uh, it's probably not good if there's grease on it, right? I mean. Why is there grease all over the place? Come on. Good. Let's try again. Um, so this is the original Z-axis plus this modification that we've done. And in the manual, it shows us it's coming together now, guys. It's, it's coming together. We are getting there. <sighs> Sliding it into the base structure, making make the previously positioned T nuts coincide with the holes on the upper screw. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, screw in the six M five by eight hexagon socket screws. Uh, is there a separate back for this, or is it just? from the back that I've already opened previously. Is there another wire spool holder? No, I, I guess this is the this is the original stuff that I already so we need to align these uh, T nuts again, probably move them around a bit before and now it's time to fix this in place let me show it to you so this is how it looks like now i think it's coming together let's align these nuts Screw goes in number one. Hmm? 
Okay, messy place. Okay, number one is somewhat in. Number two on this side. Oh, come on. I would actually love to have a second person now holding this for me. It was super helpful to have my wife helping me with the uh, with the captain tape because that like doing this alone is probably impossible. Daniel get a cat. I have a cat. Two cats actually. We have two cats. So other side. Yeah, here the screws are completely out of their position. Doesn't make it easier. Ah, oh, this is this is nasty. Okay, let's try one first. Good. Number four going in and five oh, come on. I touched the lead screw again oh, come on I hate it <laughs> call the wife yeah oh. So, it says not to fix it, but I'm, I'm, anyways, I'm going to, at least I'm going to fix it a little bit, so it's like not falling apart. <sighs> okay, let's leave it this way, so I can access both sides. So, you see, this is still, it's not fixed in place yet, still like, can vary a little bit in, in the, in the angle. But it's now it starts looking like a 45 degrees printer, right? It starts looking like something that could be working. Good. Okay, now this is the time when this uh, this is the time where this helper bracket comes in. So. There's this metal sheet here, which is um, which is angled 45 degrees, and it's going to be placed here to help adjust the bracket to the right angle. Let's move this up as far as needed, and then we can insert this. Like do it in the front so I can see it better. So basically, going in here into the structure. And then you like push it like until it's in the structure and then in the in the slots and then you will have 45 degrees, right? It's super simple. And we should verify according to the manual. <laughs> Set it to 46 degrees, yeah. <laughs> After verifying that this distance of the support is exactly 50 millimeter from the rear, both right and left, lock all six screws. Okay, so I'm going to check this first. Distance. Oh, it's almost, almost there, almost there. Not touching the lead screw again. Okay, yeah, it seems that it is like it is 50 it is 50 millimeters away. That's good. So mm, 
manual is still really helpful, every detail is covered. So, doing this side first. And looks good. Okay, and the other side. It's also 50, hopefully. No, not exactly. Push it a bit. It's not exactly there yet. Now it looks good. Okay, so let's make sure that the angle is correct. Not moving. And we can fix it. So, I saw this video. I mean, what the... Did you see Tom's video? Yeah, he made a video, he like lowered the CR30 to 15 degrees. <laughs> Which is really an interesting mod. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, it probably has its purpose for... for printing specific parts better. That require a very like long distance. I don't. I don't know what. The, I didn't see the video yet. So what is uh, what is the what is the actual uh, benefit of lowering the printer so much? Can someone do uh, tell me? Why is fifteen degrees uh, in any way better, or is it just cool? <laughs> Good. This looks. This looks almost like a printer that is done. Okay, next step. Display cable. Display cable. We'll insert the display cable and where is it going out? In the Ender 3 Pro, the cable runs through the top. That is correct because when you will not see it now. I'll try to show it to you. But the cover for the Ender 3 Pro is a little bit different than the one from the Ender 3. And yeah, I mean we can run out we can get the cable running out any place basically. It's not an issue. Cable runs through the top. Yeah, he wants to like, yeah, yeah, he wants to the cable to exit here at the side. It's, it needs to go underneath the printer. And then it's it's going out here. I'm not sure where it's actually supposed to be running, probably underneath the printer. Yeah, this is how it should look like. Um, display cable gets inserted. And then uh, it's, it's running in uh, case of the Ender 3. It's going to the top. Yeah, that's right, it's going to the top. And where does he run the cables along? Okay, it's going underneath the printer. Let's try that. So, 
so cable comes out here and we'll go can we just put it through here good question not really I would say we'll try to run it underneath on the side and then it should work should be good enough and then it's coming out on the other side here will it ah even better even better sorry for the interruption that was some kind of software hiccup so this cable here um, needs to come needs to be run here in this little slot and then it goes to the other side underneath the printer and it comes out uh, again uh, at the other side so we can so we can fix that display cable and here is a little clip and on the pictures you can see it a little bit better here you go so you see here you can fix those there's this little adhesive clips that you get with the kit and these adhesive clips um, will just be glued to the frame which uh, which is actually quite elegant and and we're gluing like who back toots we can glue something now but it's not super glue <laughs> come on Come on, I've, that's the thing. If you cut your fingernails short, then you can't get these adhesive stickers off anymore. Okay, number one, going here. So, clip the cable in. I think these clips are actually there to keep the, the cable away from the steel roller. Uh, if you look at this picture, um, because like anything that gets like, I mean, it's pretty far away, obviously, but if the cable would be touching this side here, if that would be touching the steel roller, it would be cut through because it's super sharp. And we don't want that. Good. So, just about to finish this. You can't really see it that well, sorry for that. But uh, this thing cannot be turned to its, like, to the head. It doesn't really work. So, I'm gonna quickly finish this cable installation and turn it back. So, cable is there. This is not needed anymore. So, here we go. Cable comes out on the other side, and here it is. So, we can now have that display on the other side. Bunch of cables. We're still not done. I think we still have, to be honest, I think we still have. Uh, probably an hour we would have an hour to go to finish this build didn't expect that to be so long so if you want to stick around then happy to have you here but it's like I'm, I'm not sure if I first mud printer cable bridge yeah 
<laughs> good one. Good one. It's like, okay, connect the connector at the other end of the cable to display and reposition display in its place. Uh, I think we're, that's, uh, that's good. Clear. So I will have the display connector extended free. Display getting fixed here on the side. I'll show it to you in a second. <laughs> do it, do it. I, I see, I see. You want, you want it. You want to see it finished. Okay, so I'm, I'm fixing now the, the display on the right hand side of the printer. So I'll, I'll just turn it around in a second so you can see how it's now looking. So I guess one of the next steps is going to be uh, that we have left here in terms of yeah the presser. That's the one. That's the part that presses the belt down in front of the nozzle. That's probably one of the last things. We'll also have to uh, change the bracket that holds the extruder. Another thing to do. Okay, so let's uh, I'm just gonna show it to you from the front. Here we go. So far, the display is now here on the side. This, I think we don't need this here. This is actually empty. Um, so here's a new place for the electronics box. It's 1.45 p.m. And here is the display. Uh, thing left to do is like to remove this, um, to remove the print head and then replace the, where is it? Another part missing? No, I hope not. Here it is. Such a messy desk. Um, so this, this is the new, this is the new bracket. So we we'll do, I think we we'll do that next. Let's have a look in the manual what's next. Good, uh, position now, this is, just, this is the set switch. We need that as well. So we need to position the Z su support and the Z switch. Old Z axis, yeah, this is going on the side. Nearby the Z axis motor. And this, this rod here is, is like acting as a distance holder. So I think it's just making that easier to position and to keep it, keep it in, in the right position. So there's no indication where exactly to put it, but it's like just, I think it's in a, I screwed it in as far as possible or at least as far as possible almost. And I'm just going to quickly fix that. Good. Next one. Better to position it with all the screw tightened. It will just later when the y-axis is reset during the configuration phase. So later. We are on page 67 of 87 pages. <laughs> Using a piece of scotch tape attached to an 8 mm wrench, position the nut so it stays in place. Why? Uh, just a second. Where, where would it go? Did I miss some part? Better 
yeah, this all the screw tightened. So these screws are tightened. This one is it's, it's pretty much in them all the way. Using a piece like what which 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 is he talking about? And stop Y axis. Position the Y axis limit switch stop and using the previously. Um, I did position it right. Position the Y axis. Where is it going to be uh, this positioned? Um, I'm just not seeing it, to be honest. This, this is weird, to be honest, because this is completely out of context. At least for me, it's like a little bit out of context. So I did this. Um, I, fixed, I fixed the switch. This is the uh, yeah, position the switch support, old Z axis. Um, okay, better to position it with all the screw tightened, yeah. Good. Using a piece of scotch tape attached to the 8mm wrench, position the nut so that it stays in place. Okay, maybe this comes later. I, I don't know where, where and when to use it and which nut he's talking about. I'm not sure, to be honest. <laughs> that I, I, this, this is a little bit, probably the page, I, I don't know, the page looks a little bit out of context. There is one two of these nuts. There's also an end stop Y axis package here. No idea, no idea um, when I'm going to use that. Okay, maybe I'm just missing the point. Position the Y axis limit switch stop and using the previously prepared key fix the two M hexagon socket screws to lock it. But where does this thing go? Okay, okay, I get it. Okay, I get it. <laughs> not easy to this is this one. This part was actually not easy to understand. So this is the switch, and yeah, okay. It's that there is nothing that's gonna press. Like when this axis comes down, currently there is nothing that's going to push it. Right. So this original part doesn't have any flat side here uh, underneath that's going to push the switch when it's like reaches the bottom position and that that's why there needs to be another part uh, mounted that is going to push this button now I get this idea this took me a while to be honest and yeah the mounting is uh, seems to be a little bit tricky it seems to be tricky because I don't know if you can see it, but you can probably somehow guess what it is. This nut, the counter nut for this holding piece, this piece here, this will be mounted up right here, uh, but it needs to be fixed with a, with a screw and a nut and this nut needs to go behind behind this original plate and that's why he's using tape to like this is actually good this is a good idea I'm still learning so many things today <sighs> gaffer tape it's quite silent in the chat is, is like is the live stream still going I'm am I just talking to myself <laughs> Just curious, guys. Are you still there? Is, am, am, I, am I alone now? Did the stream stop? It's so silent there. Come on, guys. D d give me some indication if you're still here, if you're still in the chat. Are you? Yeah, someone's there. Like I was, I was just like, oh, it's so silent. Maybe like maybe the stream just stopped, or maybe I hit the wrong button, or 
<laughs> it's so boring that everyone's got is is is, is just falling falling asleep. Maybe yeah. Yeah. So I know you're all waiting for something now to happen, but it's like I can tell you, it's from from my point of view, it's still challenging. It's still challenging because it's it's a lot of work and I didn't expect that and I want to get it done and I want to see it working, to be honest. Probably everyone will, will love to do that, will love to see that. Now I hope, oh yeah, this tape idea is working, this is actually really working really well. And of course, I'm, I'm of course me being stupid. I forgot the washer. <laughs> okay, again. Maybe it's not super important, but it's, I don't want to miss something that is in the end not going to work. Because Daniel missed a washer. Yeah, this is what I. This is what happens if you have to do it again. But this idea with the tape and the uh, and the wrench is actually nice. Okay, one more time. This time, it's going to work. I promise. Why is it why is it not working? This is, actually this is not easy as you can imagine you have to align three parts at the same time. The cat took the back of throughs. Yeah. I mean Our cat is actually uh, it's so it's eating everything. That is, uh, and it doesn't. Uh, one of the cats, at least, she doesn't stop eating. It's like if you find something to eat, and she's not going to stop. I was always thinking that this is a, not only dogs have this behavior, <laughs> but uh, it's also cats. Like cats, also there's cats that that just won't stop eating until everything is 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 empty come on i think this is a sign that i'm getting tired now that like i'm making i'm making some mistakes now that usually i shouldn't do this is not good this is not good <laughs> here we go i was i was just thinking i'm i've a thrown a washer in between the belt and the heat bed. I didn't, but it is still. It's getting late and uh, starting to make mistakes. Come on. This is actually a really bad place to fix the screw in because you can't, the screw doesn't go by, like it doesn't pass the motor. It's not, it's, it's, how is it supposed to work? Uh, it's really hard actually because the, that's why I'm, I'm failing uh, here because this, this, the motor is actually blocking me from inserting the, the screw in a, in a perpendicular way to this part. Why? Why does it have to be so hard? No, it's not going. 
like it's not passing this motor, like this motor is blocking me from inserting that screw. So it looked like I have to disassemble this or I have to like, get the motor off to get the screw in. Because it's not going by the motor. <sighs> okay, now it, I fixed, I managed to get it in, but the thing is now I probably won't get the nut underneath anymore because now the screw is blocking the slot, right? Mm. So, not good. Not good. This is not good. <laughs> okay, what was the question? So the set stop would still need that... What is the question? Set stop would still need that if you have or can you use a BL touch at 45 degrees? Can you even auto level the bat still? Good question, I don't know. BL touch sensor has to be perpendicular. So I can imagine if you wanna attach it here, then you would probably have a, also a 45 or what was this? Yeah, an angled bracket that puts the wheel touch actually in a perpendicular vertical position. Uh, so when it comes down, it comes like, it, the thing is it comes down to the front end and, uh, and down, and then it probably could work. I mean, it's, it's worth, the idea is actually not bad, worth a try. The problem now is that I'm, I have to insert a little screw here and it's it's just underneath this motor now and I had some issues getting it in so it's just here this is the second one and I had to get it in here on the other side and now it's blocking like me from inserting that that nut that's not good can I get it up a little bit maybe so just a tiny bit so I can get underneath that screw. Nope. Come on. This is not good. Okay, so what do I have to do? Uh, probably I need to disassemble this part, get the motor off. I wasn't planning for this. So, we'll lose another, I don't know, we'll probably lose another 10 minutes. Where's the hex driver for this? Oh man, this, this table is, is too messy. So, which one is it? This one. So, the motor is held in place by these three screws. So I will have to remove the motors holding screws here at the top because I can't reach the screw anymore. I can't reach that um, part. I wasn't planning for a extruder disassembly, but it's obviously necessary. Okay. We need to take care that nothing is missing later. Good. Good, so this was the problem. Oh, you can't really see it, but here's the screw. I couldn't reach it. 
because the motor was blocking it from going in and then I kind of managed to get it in but then it's blocked it can't I can't access the, the backside with the wrench anymore so now it's free it's free to go Are you going to finish this fin this tonight? Yeah. Um, honestly, I think it's it's taking it's like if this these kind of things happen like little nasty things. Um, but hopefully not. Well, let's say if nothing fails on us uh, anymore, we'll probably still take another. I don't know, hour at least. And I don't know if this is maybe too much. And I'm getting tired, to be honest, so. <laughs> it's getting a little bit long, yeah. Good point. So, you can, I mean, some people here say I should go for it. Um, I'm still, I'm still, Okay, I would say I still can do it, um, but I have no idea how long it's gonna take. From from now, I can't really tell you if it's it's going to take much longer now, or if we can manage it now in, let's say, really an hour or faster. Um, I, I can't really tell you. I'll just try to go faster, as fast as possible. That's what I can tell you. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to make it longer as long longer as uh, as necessary. Wayne, that's a good point. I mean, if we do, if I do, do if I do start making mistakes, and I mean, we still have probably. I mean, let's be honest. Um, the build is going to take probably another. Yeah, probably going to take another uh, hour or so. Then we still want to print something, right? So we want to see it happening. So how long is that going to take? Hmm. Uh, we we'll probably have to wait for something to come out uh, for another hour, let's say. Um, however. So should we just... Um, do another day and continue continue with another stream so everyone can that like, gets a chance to join at a convenient time So, so just to give you um, the picture, I've just um, I've taken off um, this part of the extruder, so the plastic uh, arm. It's pressing like pressing this wheel against the uh, extrusion wheel because I needed to reach, like I needed to disassemble the motor. Now I've got the motor back on, got the arm back on. So uh, we lost another 10 minutes, I guess. Don't know why it's, is it going in further or is it just, where is it going? Ah. Now it seems to be good. 
Okay, back to the manual. Um, yeah, we were basically fixing uh, this part here. Uh, and this caused trouble. You see, I mean, you can see it actually here that this is very, very tight. So that's why I had to like remove the motor and because this wouldn't go past the motor backside. Um, and I also turned, like I just realizing that I turned the motor so the cable comes out to the top, but I think it's not an issue. I'm not going to disassemble it once again. So next thing to go, what to assemble and how to do it. Attach the power supply in its place. Uh, where? <laughs> where is it going? Where is the power supply going? Attach the power supply in its place. Um, honestly, where, where do, do you see it? What to ensemble and place the two, see, it looks like it will go on, on that other side. Okay, let's figure it out. So, we have to do another thing here. We have to route the power cable. This is the heat bed cable. It needs to go underneath the printer. And it's like, from my point of view, it's a pretty short cable. No, this is, I'm, I'm wrong here. Uh, this is the other cable. It's coming out from the other side. Okay, so we need the power supply mounted to the side of the printer. So I'm, I'm still don't know where it will go. Let me check that. Will it go here where it was originally mounted? If, if he like, thinks that is going to be here. This is the original place. And the manual just says attach the power supply to its place. So if that is the place, this was the original position. Then let's do that. So I have I have an idea what we can do to um, to make it a good ending and still uh, having something to go. I will finish the build. So I'll do like basically everything that is required to to build this to the end. So we'll have all the stuff attached, every, all the screws mounted, and then we'll stop. And we'll do another stream where we're actually testing the printer, right? I think it makes more sense um, because I said it's probably going to take one or two more hours to really get it going. And this is this is actually a challenging thing. That I was really a more challenging build I, that I expected. Um, sorry for 
this. <laughs> Sorry for not uh, finishing this, but I also didn't want to rush it, of course, and didn't want to like do a lot of mistakes. Um, and I did already make some little mistakes, I realize, just by it getting late. So let's let's do it uh, and let's finish the technical build. So we have all the pieces in place and then uh, we'll have another one together where we will uh, finish the build in terms of testing the printer. So here on the, on the underneath we need to bring the power cable around. So power cable comes out here and it goes completely around the printer frame. And that's why we need some of another one or at least two of these little helpers, brackets. And that's how it should look like in the end. So looks clean to me, looks good. And yeah. We're getting closer. I can tell you there is like an electronics connection, probably another 15 minutes, hot end disassembly and adding the bracket, probably another 20 minutes. So I'd say that's that's what you can expect. Good. Next. Cable comes out around here. Yeah, this looks uh, this looks clean. So, cable this cable is power cable, this is the display cable, looks good underneath the printer. At the top, what's next? <laughs> yeah, Porf Porfirius, uh, that's the thing that we'll show, uh, we show a lot of detail here, but I'd say uh, it's it's also very time consuming. So what is next here? Connect the Z axis motor with the new cable supplied in the kit. Connect the Y axis cord motor with the Y axis cable. Okay, this is this is a new this is a cable just for the motor. And there is, yeah, there's one cable that is just for this motor. Let me double check if that is actually required. Yeah, so this is a special cable, that's true. So the new motor here on the side that drives the belt, there is a special cable coming with it. And, hmm, well, that is, I mean, I feel that it should have been in a manual that this needs to be connected at some point. It's not really, like now, it's actually very late to do that, in my opinion. Because that connector is like inserting that I'm not sure if that is so easy.
Let me see if I can get a little bit of light here. Okay. Hmm, tricky. So, what do you guys think? I'm, I'm really getting, I think I should stop here, um, honestly, because I, I've, it's getting late. And for me, it's like, okay, I can't focus <laughs> too much anymore on this. I think we've gone pretty far with the build. What is left? Just let's, let me recap. So, um, connecting the cables, getting the bracket on the extruder, and then doing the Z-leveling and then getting uh, test prints done. So I think Porphyrus is probably the right, so it's going to be one hour probably to finish all of this, get it adjusted, and then an, at least another hour to get the thing running, uh, testing something. So I would, like what I will do now, um, or what I would do tomorrow in the morning, um, I will set up a new a stream as a follow-up on this so we're gonna call it part two of the belt printer conversion and you can see it if you're subscribed you will get the notification and I, I would say um, I, I will thank you now for staying everyone who stayed that long uh, that was an like super long stream the longest stream I've ever done but I'm, I'm really like this is challenging this is, but it's probably really interesting for anyone who wants to do this. This is probably more interesting than, than uh, something that is more or less pre-built. Um, so far, there wasn't any like crazy hiccups or so, but it, um, it, it's, it is some work and it's uh, more work than I expected. So I'll, I'll invite you to another follow-up stream and i see you as soon as possible and i'll probably give the manual another read so probably speeding it up a little bit more next time and also getting into the slicer software uh, stuff because if i'm honest we will probably lose another um, few minutes or half an hour just to figure out how that works so let me do that and maybe have a chat with andrea if um, if i need to do anything special there and then we'll see each other next time Next Friday, yeah, let's do it next week. I guess that's good. And um, until then, I'll just leave it as it is and then um, get some and getting some washers. So, guys, thanks for coming. And I'll see you next time. Have a good night, have a good day, uh, however, how late it is at your place. So, see you. Bye. <laughs>